this is the scripture union land in Isinya. We call this Isinya. And um, this was bought um, maybe about 25 years ago uh, by our amazing heroes of Scripture Union. And uh, for a long time we didn't have anything happening here. But the idea behind this land was to have a camping, you know, a campsite for kids. And, you know, a resource center. Let me call it a resource center uh, for children. Uh, the last, um, like about uh, eight, seven years, we've seen a lot of work start here. Uh, the critical thing was to ho have water uh, because without water there wasn't much that we could do. So, you know, we got friends. Glenn, the sustained team of Scripture Union International came over and through Glenn and others we were able to raise funds and we uh, sunk a borehole and then we did, um, you know, the water system and that helped us to open the, the land. Uh, at first we did onions, we did uh, watermelon as income generation because, you know, we have 10 acre piece of land and we didn't want it to be idle. Uh, and then we started, you know, opening up the space for children campings. Uh, and then with time we got another, you know, grant where we were able to do some landscaping, uh, to buy tents, to do, um, you know, the, the hall, the meeting hall for the, uh, for the kids and stuff. Uh, so we started quite a bit of work and, and unfortunately just when we were supposed to have the major camp happen in 20, 2020, April, that's when COVID struck and basically everything came to a standstill. For a whole like one year there was really nothing happening here because this was one of the places which was locked, uh, you know, uh, so we couldn't access. There was a, a whatever it was called, you know, we couldn't access this land. And then um, through some friends, I got to learn about uh, herbs farming and uh, it looked interesting. Um, and, and the council, the Scripture Union Council allowed us to start with some two, three tunnels to do herbs farming. The idea was how can we create income? How can we have another source of income? Because of course, COVID came with lots and lots of challenges where most of our income level, you know, as streams basically completely went down. So we had to keep, you know, put stuff on unpaid leave and all that. And that kept me thinking, you know, Lord, what is it that we can do to have another source of income? And therefore through some friends and associations, we got to know about herbs farming, uh, specifically uh, basil farming. Uh, uh, so we, we, we started with two tunnels and it was amazing. I mean, just the fact that we could do that within a span of about three months and start getting a pretty good income. That's for the export market, but using agents because, you know, we are not exporters. So using agents. And then, um, you know, the people who are selling to said, hey, can you please add more cro crops to uh, complement? Is it complement or supplement what you already are doing? And through that then we did uh, rosemary, so we have rosemary right ahead there, and then we have thyme, uh, we also have what is called oregano, and we have basil, uh, we have sage, and we are continuing to increase uh, the scope of crops. Uh, so this is a high value crop, because um, you know, you propagate it 21 days, then you transport, uh, transplant it, uh, and then within a month it's ready for harvest. And you can do uh, about three harvests in a month. Uh, you harvest about 10, 12 cuts at most, and then you, you, know, you start it all over again. So this has been an amazing crop in terms of you know, income generation. So we did two tunnels, added another tunnel, and then two more, so we have five tunnels in all. Um, and I know this is going to be huge income generation into the years to come not just in the now but into the years to come so yeah i would encourage many movements to 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 think um you know um in terms of innovation and creativity uh we have what what is it that is on our hands um and how can we utilize what is on our hands to sustain our movements it's been an amazing journey 
an amazing journey of discovery, but an amazing journey of just realizing that yes, we have resources on our hands as Scripture Union, which we can use to sustain, because the idea is sustainability. How do we sustain our ministries? How do we make sure that our program work continues, uh, even when, you know, catastrophes like COVID happens? And so it's been an amazing journey of realizing that God can use what is on our hands uh, to sustain our ministries. Uh, COVID is now, you know, going down, thankfully. So we do hope that we can start the campings for children. However, with the mental health issues that have really hit many of our nations, and also the issue of domestic violence and child abuse and all that, we are thinking that this would be a fantastic center. It's, it's away from the cities. It's away from the city. It's in a uh, secluded place. It can be a really good place for um, a rehabilitation uh, center. It can be a great place for you know a therapy for those who are going through mental, emotional, uh, you know, health challenges. It can be a very, very good, good place for children who are going through abuse. Uh, and so we are starting to think that yes, besides the camping, how is it that we can develop this place to have a space, a safe space where kids can come, they can go through therapy, they can be ministered to in a holistic manner. And and so that's our prayer that God will give us the, the resources. Uh, and we are not just talking about financial, we are talking about people who can help us think through that concept uh, and see how we can utilize this place for holistic ministry to children. Holistic in terms of that the kids need to know about livelihood that they can plant thyme and rosemary and basil and, you know, uh, uh, have some income for their families. Uh, they have been excited about coming here and finding onions and watermelon. And some of them were like, you know, we didn't know this is how onions and watermelon grows, you know. And they would not only see how it grows, but really utilize it very, very well, you know. <laughs> uh, but we are looking at their for skills. Uh, we are looking at how can we build values into these kids, you know, but how can we build skills into them? But as well, how can we support those who are going through major, major challenges, both children, but hopefully also their families. So that's a concept that is in our minds, in our hearts, and we are praying that God will help us to crystallize it, but also um, resource it in, in, uh, at an appropriate time. Yeah, so this has been amazing, uh, excited. We now have five tunnels where we do basil. Uh, we are increasing the coverage for rosemary, thyme, and the other crops. And I can tell you, it's not been the same. We we can support. We've been able to support a number of staff members. You know, the uh, the salaries of a number of staff staff members since around uh, October last year when we started this. So that's what sustainability is about. And we are very, very happy for the sustained team that came and gave us those amazing ideas.